Welcome to Around the Hoop, the Westwood Basketball Show, sponsored by Norwood Physical Therapy and Vanderbilt Club. I'm your host, Mike Gay. Season four, episode 11, and this is the last regular season episode. Um, as always, I'm gonna be joined by both Coach Clifford and Coach St. Martin, and we'll start with Coach Clifford. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, final, final stretch. Yeah. So uh, you've had a, uh, had a really positive week um, as you look to wrap up the uh, regular season. Why don't you walk us through it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Friday, last Friday night we were here. Uh, we had a doubleheader over at Norway, which is great. Um, the boys started things off with a win. Unfortunately, we couldn't, couldn't follow suit, but um, Norwood's the class of our league this year. They clinched the, the TVL large last night um, and are back-to-back -back champs. So to go in there, we played really good defense. We were down six at halftime. Um, they just have some, some really good talent. They were able to string together some runs. Um, a credit to them in the second half. They played really good defense, so we struggled to score. Um, but again, took some positives from that against a really good team. Um, we were able to roll that into our last two league games this week. So we hosted Hollison on Tuesday night, um, got a 22-point win, followed that up last night against um, Dedham and got a nice win there too. So um, those are those are better games, you know, tight for a while, but we were able to, you know, put our offense together, start to run a little bit and um, stretch the floor on some people. And um, we did some of that. So, so it was a lot better. So um, all three of the games um, you had uh, fairly balanced scoring, um, with one exception uh, last night. Uh, Katie Kissel had a really great game. Um, in general, though, the, the, the story about your team has been balance, uh, yep. especially since uh, Hattie Noble went down. Absolutely. Uh, and then she's back. So she maybe uh, an update on Hattie, and then talk about you know what you're looking at from a, a balance perspective going into the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. So we're getting things from different people, and, and we very rarely have scoring outbursts. And I'll talk about Katie's last night in a minute. But um, our Halston game is just a little bit of everybody. So I think Chloe Callahan led us in scoring with 11 points. Katie had 10 that night. Um, Halston opened in his own, and we were able to shoot him out of it, hit some, hit some threes to get started, um, which just had to shift their defensive game plan and then we were able to take advantage of our athleticism on offense and, and do some of those things. Um, then you have a kid like Sarah Roycroft who leads us in almost every statistical category. Um, and she's not always, you know, in the tweets, you know, scoring in double digits, but she's probably averaging seven or eight rebounds a game, which is really impressive at the high school level. Um, she does steals for us. She guards their best post player and, and just is, is phenomenal. Um, last night was our senior night, so this was also a nice touch, but um, Olivia Holbrook scored our first eight points. Um, we opened in a full court man and we got that from her. Um, Katie Kissel scored a career high 18 points which was awesome just to see her in, in sort of attack mode and you're sort of seeing her grow as a player over the course of the season has been so fun um, she had 11 in the in a critical third quarter where we sort of opened things up a little bit um, so it's been fun I could go down the list and there's a lot of contributions it's great to have Hattie back um, she's still I think kind of finding her footing and, and getting back to 100% but she had eight points last night so I think there's some you know frustration for any player coming back after an injury but she did some really nice things last night that we're hoping she can build off of that's great um, is there any truth to uh, the uh, around the hoop curse or or positive uh, curse <laughs> that once players come on around the hoop they start to explode <laughs> offensively so uh, we have a little data on that i think yeah, we need to build we, that case a little should, bit should, but uh, it's uh, it's certainly it not a madden curse although mahomes <laughs> broke that too but <laughs> <laughs> a very positive one um so talk a little bit about uh the road ahead Sure. So we have the Riley Classic, which is a, a boys and girls joint tournament this weekend on Sunday and Monday. Um, we open with Wellesley, who's a team that's you know struggling in the wins and loss column, but um, they play a really tough schedule. They're athletic. Um, again, they're sort of a balanced team that plays good defense. Um, Glenn Magpyong is our coach over there, who I have a ton of respect for. So we know that'll be a tough matchup, but that's our opening night. On the other side of the girls bracket is Needham and Falmouth. Um, Needham's having a fantastic year, just I think maybe one, maybe two losses, could be one. Um, and Falmouth's in D2 South, we scrimmage them and are familiar with their coaching staff and they're having a really nice year too. So um, it'll be a competitive tournament that's, that's really good prep for the state tournament, which is how we design this every year. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, right now, um, overall, you've already clinched uh, as we've talked about. Now yep. you're into your 100 plus wins. <laughs> uh, so that's a, a great uh, accomplishment. Um, from a seating perspective, how's it looking? How's it looking uh, reg regardless of Riley Class Classic or if you win both, right. uh, where, where do you sit? Yeah, a lot can happen with two games to go and, and you kind of have the spreadsheet with all the all the games lined up and um, Keith Pearson is a, a guy who mans a spreadsheet for every score in the state, boys and girls, um, which is just an incredible resource to have. Um, so we're sitting at 12 and six right now and, and you know, looking at win totals like 14 and six would be nice, but um, you know, we've talked to the girls and I think 13 and seven will make a big difference over 12 and eight. So. Yeah. Um, 
Um, we would love to win our own tournament for, for that reason in itself, but for seeding purposes to get a win or two this weekend um, would be great. Uh, we're not looking at a home game in, in the first round, at least. Um, there's, a, there's several teams in D2 South with one, two, three losses. Um, you know, to be at six already is, is you know, definitely going to drop us out of the top eight, but um, there are a couple places that we'd like to be, and, and I think in high school basketball, the way they do the seeding just based on win-loss, you know, we're, we're heading toward a system where there's a little bit of strength to schedule and played and kind of RPI, and I'm not even sure what the formula is yet, but we're going to start that next year. But right now, when, you, when it's wins and losses, you'd love to get a home game, but other than that, it's all about matchups. Yeah. You know, you can have a 11-9 and nine team out of a really good league that no one wants to play, and they can be a 14 seed. So um, it's all about matchups, so we'll see how those shake out and tournament seedings for basketball. Um, both boys and girls come out on Friday the 21st. That's great. They could let Keith Persons just do all of it, uh, figure it all out. You know, I, I will not comment on the matter, but I don't <laughs> think I disagree with you. <laughs> no, that sounds great. So uh, it's been a, a phenomenal season. We're going to be off next week with uh, Vacation Week. Yep. Uh, again, obviously, the Riley Classic will be uh, a really great um, uh, event for, for all of Westwood. Yeah, and, it's a great the, weekend every year. Our, our parents do such a good job helping out, and um, the kids really enjoy it. It's nice to host. So Yeah, that's great. great. And then, uh, then the playoffs. So we will be back the following week, and uh, hopefully that's on the uh, – on, on the cusp Hopefully of a great, a great run. Yeah. yeah. So again, coach, thank Be you great. so much for, uh, for everything this season yeah. and uh, we'll see you. you got it. See you next time. Sounds good. There Thanks. Go. Joining me next in studio is coach Steve St. Martin. Coach. Hey, it's good to see you, Mike. Uh, great, uh, great to have you as always. And, uh, we're in the final, final stretch. Correct. Um, the, uh, Regular season is uh, effectively behind us, and now you've got a couple of uh, Riley Classic games. Yep. Uh, but you've had a great week. Why don't you walk us through? Sure, the sure. We, we've been on the road a lot. We uh, last Friday when we were here, we were going to Norwood, and uh, we were able to get in there. And we had a boy-girl doubleheader, and uh, we would get a win there. And then Sunday, we traveled to Bridgewater Raynham, which is a Division One South powerhouse, and uh, we were able to win that game as well. And then Tuesday, we traveled to Holliston and um, we're able to win there. And then the la uh, last night playing in Dedham, we uh, got another win there. So we, we were really fortunate to have the ball bounce our way and play pretty well and execute things and put us in a great position now heading into the Riley Classic as far as uh, tournament seeding and all those things. And on top of that, we were able to secure uh, outright win the TVL title again for the first time in the uh, boys basketball history to win back-to-back -back titles so that was really great as well that's great so uh, congratulations on, on that feat thank uh, you that's a phenomenal accomplishment and you've been close a couple of times correct uh, over the last 10 years but uh, this is it's great to to push through right um, so talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> you know obviously it's a great uh, 4-0 stretch so yep. any coach would uh, would love that uh, but what were some of the things that the team did well and then what were also some of the things that you identified in those wins yep. that you need to tighten up going into the tournament? Well, I mean, the, the, all the credit goes to the kids because they have to go out and execute first off. I mean, like, you know, there's an old saying, you know, failure to plan is planning to fail. So, you know, we try to prepare as much as possible. And that's, that's the first step, but like, that's not the only step. It's the execution that matters to the game plan, you know. Uh, you can have the best game plan in the world, and if you don't execute, it's not going to work out well for you. So the players are the ones that have to execute. And for them, we, we worked on a lot of different things in practice, and we try to balance practice where we know we had so many games in a row, uh, and um, we try to give them uh, certain breaks and not push them as hard as far as sprint work. In, but we did a lot of technical work, a lot of detail work, and a lot of skill work in the practices this whole week so which will continue through the until the Riley's done and then we have a day off and we're able to collect ourselves again but um, things we did really well we executed especially against the zone we executed our interior passing very very well um, Bridgewater Raynham played a box and one on us and we were able to get them out of that by executing well and then uh, Holliston played a zone against us we were able to execute that well uh, so you've seen a lot of different defenses. Um, Dedham played a man against us last night. We executed very well against that. Uh, and then they went zone a few times too. So our interior passing was really good. Our unselfishness was really good. Those are the things that we've been working on. Um, defensive rotations are still something that we're trying to fix and, and, and get better at. And, uh, and the, the scheme we play, it's, it's not super complex, but there, there are rules and roles to it that have to, you, know, you have to consistently do. Um, so that's one thing we're working on. And also are making sure that we uh, have the right mindset walking into the game. Uh, it's really tough, Mike, and you know this from just experience and seeing things that 
Uh, we've been very fortunate this year to put together a lot of wins in a row. And um, sometimes what happens is the mentality is you think you're just going to walk into the game and win. And, and it doesn't always work that way. Uh, you, you have to go and play 100%, 100% of the time. And uh, that's a challenge for anybody. So uh, the kids have been really good at identifying those things and, tr and, and, and they say it, uh, our seniors and captains always speak after practices and games and they're, they're spot on in the things that they see that they want to adjust and fix and still grow with and they're spot on with the things that we're doing really well and that's a huge step with leadership as well so it makes coaching a lot easier. That's great. <clears throat> so uh, this is a pretty pretty extensive win streak as well. So you yep. had a couple of losses early in the season. Correct. And uh, the team has been on a, on a nice run. Right. Um, th that is amazing. And obviously you want to take those wins. But right. again, you know, you, you're coming into a really critical uh, stretch here. The Riley Classic is always a, uh, a, Absolutely. Tough, a tough road. And then and then it really starts. Yep. Uh, so talk a little bit about the Riley Classic. Sure. I mean, the, the, the parents do an awesome job with the, the Riley and setting it all up. And we paired up with the girls some years ago to do it. And, 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 and I think that's been such an awesome experience. Um, very fortunate that Coach Clifford uh, and I share a similar vision on what we like for the players and what we like for our programs. We do so many things together, so it was kind of a no-brainer to do. Um, but like you said, the, the tournament's really difficult. I mean, we bring first off Severian, we open up with Severian. Uh, you know, there's a, another Division One South team that, I mean, they're in the Catholic Conference, so they're playing the Catholic Memorials, they're playing, they play Bridgewater Rain. I mean, they play a really tough schedule, Brockton, et cetera. Uh, on the other side is Braintree and Shrewsbury. Now Braintree, uh, again, they're in the Bay State Conference, Division I South team, had a lot of experience, uh, very well coached. Uh, and then Shrewsbury is uh, in the battle right now for the top seed for Division I Central. So we have three Division I teams in there, all have tournament experience and tournament resumes. Uh, and so it's really a challenge to and prepare you for what you're going to face in the tournament, we hope. That, that, that was the whole idea of putting together this tournament and also the teams you invite is to you know, prepare you for what you're going to be facing when the tournament starts. Yeah. A um, couple of uh, standout performances. Obviously, we've had a number of the players in, yep. uh, when, and as a joke with uh, Cliff earlier, um, I think coming on the show really allows players to bloom. <laughs> uh, so uh, one of the one of the last players we had on here was James McGowan. Yep. He's had a, you know eh, an okay <laughs> okay little stretch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's been fantastic. I mean, uh, one of the things that in, in young players we we do exit meetings at the end of the year, and we have the players answer a few questions revolving around the goals they have for themselves you know if they're coming back as a, as a young you know a, a young player what are your goals for the following year and uh, when we talked with James uh, and James identified a lot of things one of the things we talked about is you just can't be a, a, a three-point shooter like you have to elevate your game to be able to score at, at all three levels and when they mean by three levels is to be able to hit threes to be able to hit mid-range and also to be able to get to the basket. And he's done such a fantastic job this year of doing all of those. Um, and sometimes uh, you just stand there and watch. I mean, last night in Dead, I mean, he, he had a career high of 41 points and just was able to score at multiple levels. The best part of all that, Mike, is the unselfishness that the team has, not just with James, but with anybody, and James included. Uh, James had some fantastic passes to Favor and to John underneath, both against Holliston in the zone, and then on our fast break opportunities and half court sets. Uh, and then guys will look for him too in open spots mm -hmm. uh, because we run a lot of different sets for a lot of different people. And the sets uh, that we run, the quick hitters we, have, uh, we run, have multiple options. So James isn't always just, we're not just running a play for him. We're running it to create a mismatch somewhere and to get multiple looks. And guys have been great at not only just finding him and him finding himself from shots, but getting other people's shots as well. Because against Holliston, John Ng was our leading scorer at the half and finished, James had 21 and, and John had 19. And the, the other part of talking about, I mean, to pair off a little bit too and talk about John Ng, he, had, he took five charges last night. Five charges. I mean, as a, as a teammate, and I'm on the ball pressuring, 
the way our defense works, to know that I have an anchor back there that's going to step in and make that play for me allows me to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball. Because I know if I get beat, my help is going to be there, especially when he's in the game. Yeah. Um, so it just was a fantastic, uh, fantastic spurt and, and run in, over this last week and the last games we've been playing to watch how the guys are growing. Because, you know, the, the key is, Mike, is to always make your best better. You know, you're preparing. Every day you're doing two things. You're preparing and you're doing, right? So the game we played last night, we're preparing ourselves for the following day's practice, right? But we also have to do our best. So if, you, if you're not making your best better, you're not preparing when your best better needs to happen, if that makes sense. Yeah, being your best when it's needed, it's uh, always. Always, yeah. especially now the tournament's starting and... There is no, there's no tomorrows, you know, it's, it's today and you have to make sure you embrace that. That's great. And we've talked about, I mean, again, as, as you look to the Riley Classic and then ultimately the tournament, mm -hmm. teams are, are, you know, they're going to have to pick their poison. Yep. Uh, if they're going to go box one, triangle yep. two, right. you know, some sort of a, a wrinkle, right. you know, your other boys have stepped up. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's so key. Um, so again, uh, you know, the phenomenal run for the regular season. Again, Thank you. wrap it up with the Riley Classic, which should be phenomenal and again I, I know the support will be there from uh, from Westwood and the other right. the other towns um, 18 and 2 I believe 18 uh, and 18 two. and 2 right now um, hopefully you're you know vying for one of those top seeds we're, uh, we're in contention right now where you know we can win these next two games we guarantee ourselves a at least a one two seed and if you know by chance if we don't win both or we're in the mix for somewhere so yeah, it's it's a really two, two, competitive three. division two south yeah. it really is it always south. is you know and yes. you, and, you, and and you you never know records sometimes in the city leagues don't necessarily reflect the the qualities and you know as we've seen in past years so mm. that's why again whether it be the the winter classic or the uh, the riley classic right um you know you put the best you can play you so. try to do that you yeah. try to do that well so. it's been a uh, phenomenal run uh, thank, thank you, you for you know not only, I don't know if the uh, viewers at home know that this is, we're here really early today yeah. uh, due to some yeah. scheduling uh, yeah. issues. Uh, we were in here at uh, 6.30, 6.45. So uh, thank you to Erica. Who's yeah, phenomenal. absolutely. But uh, thank you to you and Cliff I as well. I appreciate it. So, uh, good, good luck. Thank you. Down the stretch. We'll see you in two weeks. Absolutely. Hopefully that's in the, the beginning of a very long playoff. That would be very nice. So congrats. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us on Around the Hoop, the Westwood Basketball Show. Uh, and thank you to our sponsors, Norwood Physical Therapy and Vanderbilt Club. Uh, without our sponsors, this show and all of the coverage that we bring you for both the boys and girls games wouldn't be possible. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Erica Adams. Uh, Erica has been uh, the anchor of the show. She's done all of the production work and uh, actually volunteered to come in this morning uh, at 6.30 to get the set ready and, uh, and to, to film uh, before school started. So again, thank you, Erica. Uh, Connor Lynch and Melinda Garfield, uh, both uh, huge contributions to the show. Um, if you haven't been down to 15 Per Wall Street, Westwood Media Center, you're missing out. Uh, please come by. Uh, they will be here during the vacation week, uh, so that might be a nice time to uh, even bring the kids down. Uh, this is the Westwood Basketball Show. We tend to focus on the high school action throughout the course of the season, uh, but the, uh, both the in town and the, and the travel um, teams are getting ready for some nice runs. Uh, at in town, we've got the Jamborees coming up. Uh, and if you've had children in Westwood participating in the WBA, you know that's a very big deal. Uh, those will take place on the 29th of February and then for the older divisions uh, on the 7th of March. Uh, and then the Metro West playoffs are coming um, and that starts typically at the very beginning of March. Um, so if you can't get out to see the basketball at the high school level, um, certainly try to catch some youth action. Um, again, I want to thank all of you for being uh, a part of the show, season four, episode 11. It's uh, hard to believe. Um, we'll have a couple more this season, and hopefully it'll be uh, coupled with long runs for both the boys and girls in the Metro West playoffs. Until then, I'm Mike A. We'll see you then.